Quick disclaimer before we begin, the PEMF podcast does not contain any medical advice and the content provided is for informational purposes only. If you have any health concerns, please visit a healthcare professional. Welcome to the PMF podcast. This is episode three. And today we're going to be talking about the frequencies. And yeah, obviously frequency is one of the most important or one of the important kind of aspects when it comes to PMF and obviously buying a PMF device or just PMF devices kind of in general. Uh, But I know obviously there's a lot of confusion when it comes to frequency. So can you just explain it kind of in basic terms? So we'll break down frequencies today as basic as we possibly can, because there is a easy way to get lost in the different frequencies when it comes to PMFs. When we talk about frequencies, we're talking about the the frequency that the PMF device actually emits. So frequencies can come in very high frequencies, very low frequencies, and there's some there's it's not to be confused with EMF high frequencies. So we'll we'll get into that a little bit later, but PEMF frequencies are generally low frequencies. And when we talk about low frequencies, it's anything around zero to a hundred is a kind of a super low frequency when it comes to pulsed electromagnetic fields. But some PMF devices do go up to about a thousand hertz. So they, they have background frequencies, which we'll also talk about later. So what does it actually do then? And why is it even there? So the frequency is the pulse rate. If we talk about the Earth's natural magnetic field, the Earth gives a frequency of 7.8 approximately. So that is the most natural magnetic frequency you can get. And it's the pulse rate per second. So a PMF device will pulse one times per second, one hertz, two times per second, two hertz, going up like that. Obviously when we get to a thousand hertz, 20,000 hertz, 10 gigahertz, those sorts of things, that's when you're getting into high frequencies. So what are frequency measured in and how does it differ between high and low? So the frequencies are measured in hertz. And as I say, one one hertz is, is, is one pulse per second. Um, I kind of dispel the myths around high frequency EMFs because there's a lot in the media at the moment about uh, negative EMFs and it's not to be confused with PEMF. So negative EMFs are the ones that you get from mobile phones, from laptops, from microwaves and all that sort of thing. And and they're they're in the gigahertz range. So that's like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of hertz. So it's, you know, pulse rate is just incredibly quick. And the reason these are seen as kind of negative EMFs is people are wondering now if these are harmful to health, uh, which I think is still still kind of the verdict is out there to be proved. Um, However... Mobile phones now, when we're talking about, you know, when when you talk about we used to have 3G and 4G and now 5G, um, what does 5G mean? You know, it's 5 gigahertz. So we're transferring data at 5 gigahertz. So it's like incredibly quick pulse rates. And and those EMFs are, are used to make our lives easier when it comes to, you know, downloading videos and all that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's convenience. But... What scientists are worried about now is are these super unnatural EMFs being being harmful to our health? Let's let's bring it back now to PEMFs and pulsed electromagnetic fields. And we're talking about a range of one to hundred hertz. So like I mentioned earlier, the world's natural magnetic field is 7.8. So a lot of devices sit around that kind of range. Up to about 24 is a good, good range, a, a higher natural frequency if that makes sense obviously these devices aren't nature they're not they're not you know they're not growing grass and that sort of thing Um, but they're as close as nature can be we are taken away from the earth's natural magnetic field a lot in our lives so the buildings we live in the shoes we're wearing the cars all that sort of thing is taking us away from those natural magnetic fields it actually was something that was discovered with uh with the astronauts where they would take the astronauts up to space. They would spend months on end up there. And a lot of the time they'd come down and they'd have sicknesses. And a lot of those sicknesses were due to them being taken away from the Earth's magnetic field. So it was bone generation, uh, bone degeneration issues, things like that. What NASA then did was they implemented pulsed electromagnetic fields into, into different uh, space stations. And then what they're finding is that these astronauts are coming down with hardly any illnesses. 
So that's a good example of how when you take someone away from those natural magnetic field, it, it affects our cells, it affects our, it affects our blood. So what we're doing with pulse electromagnetic field systems is bringing these natural frequencies back into your lives. So how does that affect and what do we, how do we choose the right frequency? It's a big question we get asked quite a lot. Well, there isn't, there isn't an easy answer to that. And I think we'll go to uh, another podcast when we talk about frequencies with one of our guest hosts and we'll go more in depth into these frequencies. However, for today, the easiest way to say it is that we generally tend to use higher frequencies in the morning and lower frequencies in the evening. And the reason we do this is because our brain also operates at different frequencies. And in the morning, it's running on higher frequencies when we're drinking coffee and when we're kind of full of um, enthusiasm in the morning, you know, we're running on a higher frequency. But at sleep time, our brain tends to run at about four hertz. And that's where we want to be for deep sleep. So we tend, to we tend to apply lower frequencies in the evening. And that's the best and easiest kind of way to, to talk about frequencies for the time being. So you said about using obviously certain frequencies at certain times of the day or for certain activities. Can the PMF devices actually change your body's internal frequency? So yeah, yeah, it can. Um, and what we tend to find is that people that use higher frequency in the evening or they use a super intense device with a high frequency, it, it tends to affect their sleep in, in a negative way. So most PMF systems is um, really helping with sleep and we see the benefits with insomniacs, but it's all about getting that right frequency. So using a device later in the evening with a lower frequency is the way to do it um, and generally tends to be at lower intensities too. We get a lot of people that come to us and they say, you know, I've seen a certain study. So there's been a study that's published and say, for example, it's using 10 hertz um, for a certain amount of sessions, certain amount of times a day. And this has had a super, you know, good effect on someone's arthritic knee or in the study. And this person wants to replicate that study. And yes, that's great. Uh, there are a lot of devices out there where you can choose the frequency and you can choose the treatment time. But in a real life situation, we actually recommend that you use a number of different frequencies um, because what tends to happen is our bodies tend to get used to one frequency. And if you're using 10 hertz to replicate that study and you're doing it three times a day for three months, then your body kind of can't, gets accustomed to it. It's like anything. Your body will become accustomed to anything. You know, if you only eat the same food three times a day, you know, after a little while, your body will start to use those nutrients a little bit less. So what we actually recommend is you change your frequencies and the best way to do it is to have a higher frequency in the morning. Maybe you get your 10 hertz in, in the middle of the day and then you get a lower frequency in the evening. So yes, we get a lot of people that want to replicate studies and, and there will be benefits for those, but actually it's better to kind of give yourself and, and experience the, the body's ability to use different frequencies. So frequency isn't necessarily related to your condition or is it, what's your kind of opinion on that? Yeah, so again, people want to see a book of conditions and what frequency to use. Everybody asks that, you know, they want this kind of guidebook as to, okay, I'm treating arthritis today and I want to use, what frequency do I use for this? And, you know, tomorrow I might have a headache, you know, so what frequency do I use for a headache? And again, it's... A lot of manufacturers, PMS systems have tried to put this together. So they've tried to put together some kind of guide and frequency. And yes, there are frequencies that work better for certain things. But we try not to get wrapped up in that. And we try not to get too confused in those because different manufacturers will recommend different frequencies based on different studies. But again, as long as we're within the therapeutic range, kind of under 100 hertz, we're going to see benefits anyway. If you're applying PMS two times a day or even once a day you're going to see a benefit with certain frequencies so again it's one of the things that i don't try and get people to get too wrapped up in and as long as you're using the frequencies at the right time of day and within a certain range then you should be good
because when I was doing some research for this podcast, we've obviously like Google and kind of like some SEO tools for intensity, the categories were near enough blank, but then for frequency, it was frequency treating this frequency treating that frequency for this. And it pretty much filled up every single slot. So would you say intensity or frequency is kind of more important when it comes to actually trying to treat something? Okay, so when we compare frequency and intensity and which one is more important, for me, intensity is more important because most PMF devices will offer frequencies within the therapeutic range because that kind of puts that device into a PMF device. There isn't many devices that you don't get in that therapeutic range, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so for that reason, obviously frequency is very important, but for that reason that most devices will give you the ability to use the normal frequencies, that for me makes intensity more important because the intensity side of things is devices, there's many devices out there that are very, very super low frequent, uh, super low intensity. And there are devices out there at a super high intensity. And they're very different to each other. So getting the intensity right for me is more important than getting the frequency within those ranges. Is that then because there's a lot more variation when it comes to intensity with the devices than there is frequency? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So <clears throat> the devices will have a normal range of 0 to 100. Some, some devices only, only offer one frequency. So it will be set to maybe the Earth's natural magnetic field or it's set to a low frequency or a high frequency so that you can use them at different times of the day. So when you look at the different devices, the frequency tends to be all set anything up to about 24 on, on you know 99.9% .9 of devices. Um, some devices only have one button, button operation. So you press the button and it'll either run one frequency or run a couple of different frequencies. Um, but as I say, the intensity for me is something that dictates the price. And if you get a low intensity device, you can't then pull the power up, if that makes sense. If you get a higher power device, usually you can pull the power down and you can use it at a low intensity at the same frequencies that most devices offer. On more of like a buyer's guide kind of question, what ranges of frequencies should people be looking for if they are going to buy a PMF device? So when buying a device, when looking for a device, you want to be looking that the device has at an absolute minimum one to 24 hertz. Above that, anything up to about 100 hertz, there's, there's benefits for different kind of frequencies that run up to 100 hertz. There are some devices out there that run background frequencies and the background frequency tends to be 200 hertz, 300 hertz, that sort of thing. Generally, you, you tend to find these on low, low intensity devices. And that's because low intensity devices need more help in different areas. So what they tend to do is they tend to run a background frequency and then like a 1 to 24 hertz in the, in the forefront. The background frequencies are generally for circulation and they help with circulation. So, but for me, it's not, it's not something I would say that you have to look for in a device and it tends to be in the lower intensity devices, um, but it's just something to mention. Once again, when I was doing the kind of research for this podcast, a lot of people seem to be searching for some sort of like frequency chart or frequency condition chart. Does such thing kind of exist? And if so, how much weight would you give something like that? So a lot of our customers do ask for some kind of frequency chart and something that basically says this frequency does this, this frequency does this, this frequency does this. Again, from my opinion, leave it to the manufacturers and let them set up different programs that run different frequencies. If you are chasing one frequency for each treatment, it's just a little bit counterproductive a lot of the time. And... It also varies between manufacturers. So I'm yet to find a definitive chart that I feel ticks every single box when it comes to the frequencies. Um, one manufacturer will state this frequency is good for this. You find another manufacturer will state that five hertz less than what the other manufacturer. Of, you know, there's not a lot of consistency out there. That's, that's the biggest problem for me.
Yeah, of course. I know when I was Googling the charts, I found quite a lot of variation in between them as well. Um, but I'd just like to say, if you have enjoyed this podcast, if you could please drop us a follow on Spotify and leave us a five-star review, that would be amazing. Uh, and if you are actually interested in buying a PMF device, uh, I'll link Numed and his company in the podcast description or the description of wherever you're listening or watching this podcast. Uh, if you are actually looking to buy a device. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions whatsoever on any of the podcasts we've done so far, please leave them in the poll below and we'll do a podcast soon answering all of your questions.